What's going on everybody? I just want to make a quick video on how to remove an injector from a Cummins ISL. I believe this is a 9 liter. So it's pretty much uh, about ready to come out almost. So what you want to do is remove everything that gets in your way from removing the valve cover. So you pull the valve cover, you want to take off the Jake brake assembly. After you remove that, you want to remove your exhaust rocker arm. And uh, you don't have to take your cross head off, but it's up to you if you want to take it off or not. And after you take off your exhaust rocker arm, you have to remove your exhaust fuel connector. Connector, which is this thing. Let's see. Oh, damn. Give me one second here. Okay. Yeah, that thing there. This is, this is the nut. If you want to loosen, your connector nut all the way sorry about that okay you want to loosen your connector nut all the way to where you take your nut out and then you pop your connector out See the connector? You pull it out all the way. So it goes something like this. There's an old connector. So the nut slides onto a connector like that. Like so, and that's how you tighten it in place. So you want to remove your old connector here. There's actually a, a good new one. I'm going to reuse that because it was just sitting in there, it wasn't tightened down or anything. And then you want to remove your two, give me one second here. So you take your 516 socket and you remove your injector. You want to do about a half turn at a time. So I don't pull one bolt all the way out and then the other. I already had these broken loose. So So remove your injector hold down plate. You actually, this crosshead does get in your, this your crosshead does get in your way, so you better off probably just removing the cross the crosshead, putting it aside. So after these babies are nice and loose, flip out. Slip out your injector hold down plate or cup, whatever these are called. And then you want to get a heel bar and pry in there in between the, the head casting and the injector lip. Usually they're not too, yeah, see, usually they're not too, too seized on there, but. There's actually a new injector. I'm just pulling that, pulling it out for the video. You want to make sure you this this copper washer, this crush washer, comes out because a lot of times they'll get stuck down in the bore, and you cannot run two washers. That will not go well. <laughs> so when you go to install your new injector, see it's got this little port here. So this port. That their port is for your nozzle, your fuel nozzle, or your fuel connector, which goes in that there hole, that hole right there. So you want this port to aim towards that hole. 
So what you do is you set your injector back in there like that. You see the injector has a, a roll pin here. So that little roll pin goes into the slot on your injector connect I mean on your injector plate or your injector cup. Okay, so really really can't mess it up. So you just drop your cut back in there. You want to rotate your injector to you feel it fall into a little to the roll pin falls into a little slot. You want to start these bolts by hand. This so you see your injectors in place and you just want to get a, just push it down just a little bit just so you make sure it's seated properly you want to make sure you lubricate your o-rings that are your are your injectors just a little bit of engine oil will do just a tiny bit not too much so you want to tighten these down by hand you're done like this you do one then you do the other and you make sure that the gap in between the injector and your plate is even all the way around see that little gap that will ensure you that your injector isn't cocked because it can't it can get cocked so you want to make sure that it's not cocked so if the gap is the same all the way around and you continue tightening it by hand you don't want to you don't want to tighten these yet because uh, there's a couple other steps you have to do before you tighten these down just want to do it by hand okay so about as tight as I can get it with my fingertips so this gap here is the same all the way around can't really see this side over here it's the same all the way around and after this you want to so after you hand tighten your injector you want to put a little bit of oil on your fuel connector, and uh, it's gonna go. It's gonna go in that hole right up there. So it's got this notch up here. So this thing can only go in there one way. Let's see, let me get up here. Yeah. Yeah. A little notch as you can see it goes facing up okay, so you want to rotate it with your fingertips and you'll feel it okay so after you feel that the, the notch is in its place then you give it a little push and it will click in like that so after you do that you want to grab your connector nut. This is the old connector. This is the nut. It's not a bad idea to clean the inside of the nut a little bit. But I'm just going to leave it. You want to clean the inside of the nut a little bit. And you put you put the connector nut Over terrible lighting. Over the connector. Oops. Dust it off real quick. You put it over the connector. And you start it. See, it's over the connector now. And you start it by hand. So make sure you don't cross thread anything. So you bottom it out by hand, as far as you can get it. See, so the nut is bottomed out by hand onto the connector. And then, you want to torque that nut down to 100. And 
33 inch pounds with an inch pound torque wrench. Give me a second here. Okay, so after you you torque your fuel connector, your fuel connector to 133 inch pounds, then you want you want to uh, torque your injector down to 89 inch pounds. I'm sorry, there's a few things going on over here right now. So. Take your 516 socket. Yeah. Alright, thank you. Alright. Okay, 516 socket. And since I'm doing it single handedly, I'm gonna have to cut and continue once I torque it. So after you torque your injector down, then after that you finish torquing. Your connector, your fuel connector nut, and I want you to torque to, to uh, 41 foot pounds. It says to use a crow's foot, but it is almost impossible to get a crow's foot in there. Okay, so then you torque that to 41 foot pounds, and after you do that, then you put your exhaust rocker arm back on. When you do put it on, make sure your cross head is on there correctly so with this little pin or whatever little dial or something towards the outer direction of the engine not towards the center towards the outer so in other words out there so here's your push rod right here you see it's got this little indent you gotta make sure the ball on this here uh adjuster bolt whatever it's called here make sure the ball pops into your connecting rod because if not you will have a catastrophic failure and you torque that you torque that down to what does that go torque to 25 foot pounds okay so on your exhaust rocker as you run the bolt down by hand, you want to jiggle the rocker as you run it down by hand to make sure it seats in place. And then you want to torque these bolts for your Jake assembly down to 23 foot pounds. It says not to do it like in sequence, that, but I prefer to do it in sequence. It says it doesn't really matter, but I do it in sequence just because it's a habit. Okay. That's all. Thanks for watching.